Alright, welcome back. Now let's see what this old Lenry actually wants with us. A memory, a copy of a memory. Why would she need a copy of a memory? She seems preoccupied. Maybe I could sneak around first? What do you mean sneak around? Fine, let's sneak around first. Just an ordinary sink. Entity deactivated. Okay, these are deactivated entities. <laughs> Come on, what's the point of hiding it now, bro? Can we dust this billiard table? I guess there's nothing more for us. Oops. I went up the slow stairs. <laughs> well, might as well commit, right? Let's check if anything is actually here. A, a laptop with a physical lock on it. Yeah, I don't think anything's actually here. Door's locked. Okay. Let's just engage then. Okay. Hey. It's almost ready. What is? And what's all this? I've been compiling a batch test case in to check for certain suspicions. It was about done, but you were out too soon. Too soon? It felt like I was in there for quite a while. You were in a separate data stream where time is experienced differently. It's only been a few minutes over here. Resuming compilation 67%. Actually, while we were waiting, I have a question for you. For me? Yes. Given what you've seen... Given what you've seen, am I a terrible, selfish person? I haven't made a single save. I pressed escape. <laughs> I don't think that's fair to say. I mean, I can't say what you did all the right things, but... I don't know how many people could have if they were actually in your shoes. Was that a choice? I literally pressed escape to see if I could bring up the save. Okay, so whatever I get, this is the escape route. <laughs> But selfish? I suppose so. I wasn't... I mean, Quincy wasn't exactly altruistic either, but... He really did seem to try his best to put your happiness above all else. Linry? Compiling 72%. I see. Well, we still have time, so I'll return the favor. Anything you'd like to ask me? Why? Hmm? Why do you even care what I think? I mean, if I am what I am, what are you even talking to me as if I'm actually him? Because you... Because I'm supposed to be testing your believability, that's all. Is that so? Compiling 76%. Now... Would you like to ask any actual questions while there's still time? Let's humor her. Yeah. Sync time travel. So, what's with the murders happening here? I mean, this simulation is based on your memories, right? How come I didn't see it in the flashbacks? Because the murders never happened. At least, I don't remember it happening. Which is strange because it seems to be unavoidable in the simulation based on my memory. Did you figure out why? Not yet, but with what I'm setting up. I'm afraid I'm about to. Compiling 82%. 
sink time travel. About that sink in the washroom. I know that time wasn't being rewound, but why did it do what it did? The sink never did anything. I know it's hard to believe, but it was a coincidence. Or rather, a series of coincidences that happened over and over. As I was debugging, I reset the scenario a few times in the process. It was an oversight, but because you were an inserted entity and not native, you were not reset. And I just happened to be using the sink that... That sink every time you did a reset? Yeah... Isn't that too much of a coincidence? It is oddly improbable, but still above a 0% possibility. One of the reasons for my suspicion, actually. But we'll test that soon. Compiling 88%. It's almost complete. There's time just for a couple more questions. So there really were two of you in this mansion earlier? Well, in the first run, I assumed direct control of myself in this memory, so there was only one. But in the resets after the murder, I had to scout and debug, so I spawned another token me. You were only able to see this me because we were both from this first spawn before a reset. So yeah, me and the token me. Compiling 894%. One last question and we're starting. The real Quincy. I hope you don't mind me asking, but quite a few years skipped by at the end of that montage. What happened to me? I mean, Quincy. I don't know. You don't know? I don't. It's been many years since we've talked. After everything that happened, we just... We just went our separate ways. Or perhaps more accurately, I did. Piling 100%. Okay, it's ready. I've prepared a batch of test scenarios with particular variables. Notably, the location of Dr. Haynes and Dr. Yu and their intent. As for you, you'll be my observer. Observer? Yup, all you have to do is go into the rooms and look at them. That's easy. Look at them to check if they're dead. That's easy but less appealing. It's for science. Oh then, uh, yay? Indeed, are you ready? Yes, yes, or definitely yes. Let's go definitely yes. Great, now check the bathroom. The bathroom? Yup, I stopped them there first. Can you not? The bathroom is like the only sanctuary I had left. It's fine, I'll be monitoring and waiting right out here. Besides, you need to learn to get out of your comfort zone. Oh, we're way beyond the very concept of comfort zone. Uh, let me guess, they're dead. No, they're not dead. Uh, I see them. Good, now come back out. Can we talk to them? Hello? They don't seem so responsive. Okay. So, alive or dead? Alive, I think? They aren't moving and responsive, though. Yeah, I've set them on a different layer. Wow, is it, what is this, Photoshop? Okay, now go back in and out a few more times and report their status. Alright. Please, no jump scares. Almost a jump scare. Whoa! Well, they're alive. Now, still alive, but they're closer. Oh, that was me. Sorry. Move them for convenience. Go on. Again. Oh. S. <laughs> Linry. Dead, Linry. They're dead. Uh, sure. Yes! This could be bad. It is bad! They're dead! I, I, it's a memory, bro. Okay, I'm gonna log off and get Dr. Kim to come help. Just check the other rooms while I'm gone, alright? Wait, you're leaving me alone to check for more bodies? What's the issue? You've already seen much worse earlier. Besides, you know they're not real. 
I know I'm not real. I mean, in terms of realness, they're just as real as me. Fair point. Okay, then. Here. Why do we get the cat? What is this? Your bodyguard. <laughs> My bodyguard? Yeah, he protect... Nice meme. What about he? I, I want him to attack though. And he, uh, are you are you saying he's a thick boy too? <laughs> oh no, he's a long boy at least. Okay, I'll be back soon. Good luck. Wha wait. Okay, Mr. Cat, please protect. I need cat. Tell me, do you really protect? <laughs> what a long cat. You don't protect. <laughs> What the? I am System. Oh, I've seen you in her memories. Good. System supervises Quincy while Lirney is gone. Do you now? Guess I'm gonna be babysat by a giant talking sound wave. Do not be afraid, for this is not my final form. I think that's all the more reason to be afraid. Behold, a form even you may comprehend. Oh, rice bot? Indeed, rice bot was merely the humble beginning of my AI, but now I am much more. I am creator of worlds and cooker of rice. Taste my rice. Uh, taste it. <laughs> he shared it with the cat. Holy smokes! This... This... This is the tastiest rice I have ever eaten! How can something taste this good? It's literally on his knees. Nobody knows. I... I need to know! There is no way to know. But when Quincy completes mission, reward is more rice. What are we waiting for then? So let's go find them. Rice bot sis, join the party. Oh yeah, you can come too. Cat question mark, join the party. Now let us proceed to the party hall, the kitchen, and the study repeatedly until they die. Okay. There ought to be a better way to put that. Alive. Alive. Well, can't really talk to them right now. Alive? Can we talk to Ricebot? Please exit room to reset and then enter again. Hey, if you don't mind me asking, what's the point of this? I mean, we're just resetting until they're dead. Why not just make them dead? It is not about them dying, but when they die. Each reset is configured with specific conditions. Patterns will be derived from experiment data. Hypothesis will be tested. Cause will be determined. Hypothesis. Wait, are you getting longer? Uh, what do you even do? He gets longer. He's a long boy. Anomaly detected. Okay, now they're dead. Can we can we talk to? Death anomaly observed. Please proceed. To okay, that's it. Uh, this is really kind of mor morbid. It's kind of uncomfortable, but at the same time, I know it's what we're supposed to do. See, you see how the screen goes dark like that? Anomaly detected. Okay. Hey, if, if you're gonna be here too, anyhow, why don't we? Why do you even need me here? Because Quincy is also test subject. In addition, Deity shows Quincy presence alters results. I change things just by being here. Why? Inconclusive, more data needed. Because this life is meaningless without you, Quincy. That's why everyone dies. Stop. Hover time? Stop. Hover time. Whoa, whoa. Wow, so powerful. Whoa, whoa. Stop. Have my time.
Please exit. Okay. Wait, it just occurred to me. By doing the resets, am I technically the one killing them? Yeah. Quincy is not the one doing the reset. Oh. Whew. However, Quincy is cause of death by observation. Damn it! Wait, what do you mean? Professor status only calculated upon observation. What? This, they're literally stro stro strogenders. Schrodinger's professors? Quincy observation causes status. Status is death. Therefore, Quincy causes death. Okay, I don't like that. I don't like this. I don't like seeing dead bodies. Okay. Anomaly detected. Okay. Are we done? That's it, right? The door is locked. Quite a room in there. The music died. I don't like this. Let me guess. Everyone is dead downstairs, right? Linry? Is this a memory, Linry? Linry, you're back. Linry, what's wrong? Whoa, what are you doing? Uh, Linry, you're scaring me. I just need a moment. What happened? What did you see out there? Nothing. Hey, you can tell me. It's not like I'm gonna r run with it. Linry? Linry, initial tests were completed. The hypothesis holds. Continue? Yeah. I'll be there soon. Affirmative. Proceeding to party hall. The hypothesis? Please proceed to the party hall. I don't like this. It is starting. Huh? I remember this from the memories. They demoed the machine here, right? I don't think the replay got that far, though. This is the furthest point. Huh? Death is variable, but... All death tangents link to this moment. When they demoed the machine for the guests? Affirmative. Data predicts if we leave this room now, everyone will die. Everyone here will die, Data predicts. Now, let us leave this room. What? Do we have to? It is imperative. Leave this room and come back to confirm. Please leave and come to act. What if I don't? I guess I'll just do it. What the? She's gone. Data shows Linry is offline. Again? She will be back. In the meantime, please return to the party hall. I mean, demoing a memory machine to memories is kind of weird, you know? Death confirmed. Maybe that's why they die. Resetting room. Wait, if you could just reset the room while we're in here. Why did we have to leave and come back every time earlier? Leaving was not necessary for reset. Leaving was necessary for death. What? Whenever we look, they do not die. Whoa, what happened? Uh, I'm not certain. This isn't supposed to. It's never happened before. Under this scenario, equipment damage occurs. Core computing unit in basement is destroyed. D -d destroyed? How? Data unknown. Resetting. Now the final test. Quincy will go to basement. The core computing room? Affirmative. Both sites will be observed. Data anomaly is expected. What kind of anomaly? Unknown. 
Guess I'll find out then. Do you remember the entrance? The pool table? Affirmative. Please proceed. Where is this going? Wait. I want some rice. It is dangerous to go alone. Take this. Why don't you come with me? Take this. <laughs> this isn't gonna work. Take this. Cat joined the party. He literally forced the cat on me. I mean, sure, why not? I don't like this. I don't like this one bit. I remember the core computing is over in the left, right? All right, okay, we're down. Kind of creepy with no one here, though. Yeah. What the pug? Endless hallway? I don't remember this hall being nearly this long before. I don't like this, I don't like this, I don't like this. I'm not good with horror. What was that? Not even slight horror. I'm just really bad at horror, okay? Did you- did you hear that? Something's not right. I don't like this, I don't like this, I am scared, I am scared. <laughs> okay, you know what? Stop! Just stop it! What the pug is this? Why is this corridor so long? Where does this light keep coming from? Actually, that light's kind of weird. And what's with all the weird sounds? You hear that? Freaking creepy wood creaking! How? It's all metal and concrete here! There is no wood! Good point. And you! What do you even do? How are you supposed to protect? You don't even have a knife! Uh, you're just a cat! And now that I think about it, you aren't even that long! He's almost as tall as you, though. If only you were actually helpful. Why did you make the cat cry? Come on, don't be like that, Quincy. Okay, look, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> it's just, it's just been a rough day, you know? I mean, first all the murderers and then I find out I don't exist. Yeah, that, that would put a damper to anyone's day. Even for an optimist, that stings. On the upside, I guess it really can't get any worse from here. Famous last words. And then it got- and then it gets worse. Come on, let's go finish this. Whatever's up ahead, I'll take it. Huh? Wait, what was that? Uh, it, uh, the cat is evolving. Kato! Evolve to... Put... What was that? Thin Hariyama. <laughs> You've become something else. Something more. Yeah, you're definitely Thin Hariyama. You're, you're taking the lead? At the darkest hour, you've really come through for me. I'm sorry I ever doubted you. Long cat. All right, let's go observe the pug out of that computer. I am I am playing as the cat. I love I, I'm loving every second of this. Dun, 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 dun. Hello, Linry, you're you're back. Yeah, sorry, I just had to step out and double check something. Are you almost at the control center? I sure hope so. We've been walking for ages. The corridor leading to it seems to be stretched. It... it seems to be looping. Boy, I'll say. Wait, you mean literally? Yeah, hang on. It should be fixed now. Uh, thanks, but why was it like that? I'm not certain, but the room should be just be up, up ahead now. Because Linery actually didn't want this experiment to work. Tell me when you get there. Start the demo sequence then. Because if we get to the end, that means... 
it's the end. That means she has to face whatever reality she made for herself, you know? Okay, well now we're observing the pug out of this machine. Well, we're finally here. You ready? Okay, Linry, do you hear me? Yeah, the scene is ready and loaded. Should we uh prepare for something? Just being there is enough. We'll have your we'll have your data stream. You only need to stand there and observe. Okay, I'm good at that. I hope you are. Well then, shall we begin? Begin the final test. Wait. Maybe I should uh, check the place first. You know, to make sure there's nothing suspicious. Might as well. More data doesn't hurt. But make it quick. Come back to machine when you're ready. Oh, it auto saves. Well, might as well make a save. For oh, no, no, not exit. Let's get out. Okay, let's go. Begin the final test. Let's go. Alright, I don't see anything unusual here. Don't know why I thought I'd be able to now that I think about it. We're ready, Linry. Let's do it. Okay, the demo scene is starting. You should see the machine powering up. Yeah, it, it just did. Good, keep your eyes on it and tell me if you see anything weird. Uh-huh. Do you see anything? No, it seems to be running normally. Although... Although... There's some weird sound. What kind of weird sound? Is the machine short-circuiting? No, it's not coming from the machine. It seems to be coming from... I don't like this. Oh my god. Oh my god. Quincy? The system is almost ready. What are you seeing? Horror. Eldritch horrors. That's what I'm seeing. Thank God th these guys don't like to jump scares that much. But well, what is that? I mean, I guess it's not a true horror game, so there wouldn't be jump scares. Barrier? Don't move. What are you? Why can't I get a reading on you? You already know why. Then, are you the reason... When I unplugged from here earlier... When I logged off, there was nothing. Nothing but the machine to log back in with. As if the entire world just vanished. Am I not real either? No, you are real. Relative to this place, at least. L Linry? Then, how many... Too many. What is it talking about? Too many what? Too many worlds. We're a long way up, Quincy. There are a lot of layers beneath us. I may have created your world, but another had created mine. Over and over until after however many layers. At the bottom of a stack, there exists the world that ran the first simulation. 
But as each simulation creates another, the original at the bottom is weighed down more and more. Until finally, even if just one more simulation is created, no matter how abstract, it would be enough to overload and collapse the entire structure. Tell me, are we at the top of that stack? You are correct. Then, there's something that I still don't get. Why don't you just cut the infinite loop from the get-go? Why are you trying to preserve this world without eliminating us? And why are you here even bothering to talk to us about any of this? Why do you even bother talking to him? Hey, I'm right here! That's different, he's... He's... Linry? Tell me, who are we to you? To me? To me, you are no one. But then again, that doesn't mean much. I'm not so different from that rice bot of this world, after all. You don't look like a rice bot. Come, Quincy, get with the program. No, I certainly hope not. Were you also an AI refit for the simulations? Well, not exactly. But I sure do clean up after your mess just the same. These worlds may be simulations, but the automation still follows the laws of physics. To a fault, really. In cases like this, for example, someone has to manually prevent everything from imploding. Fortunately, I happen to have an innate disregard for the laws of physics. But that's all a story for another day. Hey, what are you... Paper airplane? Shall we? There are a lot of tangents out there beyond this one. Each moment blooming into countless branches of their own. But this particular tangent is being observed because it is special. It is special because despite being at the top of the stack, it was almost identical to base reality. There, everything began unfolding the same way. Your childhood, your youth. Your diagnosis. And just like here, against all odds, you kept pushing on. Never wasting a moment to unravel as much of the world as you can, while you still could. You learned all you could, tried as hard as you could. You met someone. Someone you imagined a future with. And graduated into a career where you felt you could make a difference. For a while at least. Until it became something else. Too much to bear. You escaped, traveled the world.
and wondered why he didn't do it sooner. The base reality where we're from, it all followed the same course. That is, up until that point. When you came back from the trip and found out you were pregnant, when you became ill halfway through the pregnancy, when you had to make that choice between yourself and the child, you chose to delay your surgery until he was due. You chose the child. Congratulations, but please rest well. You need some time to recover, but we're quite behind already. We'll be transferring you to the surgical unit soon. I understand. How is he doing? He's okay. You're the one we should be worrying about. He's tiny. Our little Toby Raynard. Actually, about that. I've been thinking, well... Maybe, maybe you should take your surname instead. My surname? I mean, I can't think of any reason why not. But after all that, I can think of lots of reasons why he should. I'd love that. Although, Toby doesn't ring as well as Watts with Watts, does it? Do you have something else in mind? How about Neil? Neil Watts? Are you fucking shitting me? Really? Neil, huh? Yeah, I like it. Our little Neil Watts. Oh god, I'm never gonna laugh at Neil ever again. In base reality, your son never had the complications of an early birth. He made it through childhood just fine. With all the love you and Quincy could give him. But as for you, you never fully recovered. With a delay, the treatment couldn't revert your decline. And you spent much of your remaining years bedridden. Still, perhaps out of the will to be there for him, you lived long past your prognosis. To watch him grow up, even if just a little more. But eventually, as you felt your time coming near, you sought out some old friends to leave something for him when he grows up. You left him a piece of your memories. At the time, there was no way to decrypt it. But still, someday, you hoped. When it rains, it pours. Soon after you passed away, your son was diagnosed with the same hereditary condition. But perhaps it was a reminder of his limited time here, Memento Mori. It stirred up something within him, pushing him further as it did for you. And although he tried distancing himself from others, knowing what might await those who get close, he wasn't successful with everyone. Slowly, from the very basics, he worked and worked, and all the way past the research you left behind. But despite it all, when the time came, again and again, he was rejected by the foundation over your incident. So instead, he sought an alternative, an alternate route. He pivoted to an external company that licensed the imperfected technology. And rather quickly, he made it into the ranks. With some help from a friend. <laughs> oh, Eva. 
It was a company where he could still access the code and hardware of the technology. A company that used it to fulfill the last wishes by implanting the memories of a new life. A company called Sigmund Corp. It's been many years since then. In that time, he's aided countless patients and witnessed as many lives go by, all while perfecting the technology on his own accord with the hardware and data access. And today, in that world, he succeeded. The world that we're in and every world in the stack it stands upon, they're the result of the first functional stress test from the machine he perfected. The first successful test, this machine he built, what is it for? A window to a world where everyone could leave a part of themselves after they're gone. So that everyone who ever existed, no matter how ephemeral, ephemeral, could have a lasting place in this world. And without having to say goodbye even earlier than they have to, to see and experience all the different possibilities this life has to offer. All my life here since that day he was born. I wish I'd made a different choice then. I'm so glad that somewhere out there, I did. I'm so glad that he's made it. It's almost time. Now that we've gone beyond the boundary of set events, the tangent needs to be terminated. Terminated? It's just one tangent. Can't you let it run just this once? But it's not just this one tangent. Out of the countless paths the test generated, this is not the only one that reached this point. As I speak to you on this roof, I am speaking to thousands of other versions of you as elsewhere. They too managed to dig deep enough to have found me. And if I don't terminate them, the foundation will fail and take everything with it regardless. This world was never meant to exist beyond this point. But the world decide I might have a way to give you more time. When you're ready, come with me. There's a place we need to go to. Anomaly detected. Long cat. Rice pot? You guys got here just in time. Hey, can they come with us? No, I'm afraid not. Where we're going, there's no protocol for them. They'll have to stay here. Well, say goodbye to Ricebot, I guess. So, uh, you heard that, right? Affirmative, I am linked to Lir Lir <laughs> Linry's data feed. But do not worry, for I am well-versed. Well-versed in what? In ceasing to exist. I am shut down daily, I guess. I guess that's one way to look at it. I'm not sure if this is the same thing, but let's hope so. There can be no difference between nothingness Farewell until next time. Farewell, Ricebot. Hey, about what happened back there. I know, it was pretty scary, huh? <laughs> Listen, I don't blame you for running. To be honest, I was so panicked that I didn't even notice you were gone. On the other hand, uh... Sorry we got the world deleted. I'd say curiosity killed the cat, but I guess we weren't even ever alive. I honestly still don't know what your deal is, but... Maybe I'll see you at the reboot one day and find out, yeah? Take care, little dude. You doing okay? Hey, Linry. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm more than okay. <sighs> Let's go. Well, shall we go? Yeah, um... Linry? I'm ready. So, where are we going? Somewhere far, but you'll be among good company. Now, this ride might be a bit more intense than the last one. Would you like the front seat or the back? It really doesn't matter to me. I guess Linry can sit up front. Alright, your call. Uh, we don't have to fly up, you know, but okay. <laughs> Rip Quincy. We, we, you could have picked a smoother incline thing. <laughs> Whatever. We've reached our station. Looks like we're the last to arrive. The, the last ones? What is all this? <laughs> the Quincy over here is mind blown. And the Quincy down there is mind blown. Are these all... Versions of you from Tangents, where I materialized, yes. The salvageable ones, at least. Salvage salvageable ones? Well, we can't extend every rogue versions of you, but... If we consolidate the one similar enough, then there'd only be one set to deal with. That is a way to end the rogue infinite loops, but still keep you, in a sense. Speaking of which... I think everyone's here. There, isn't that all better? Sorry, you have to see me like this, but I'll try to be quick. Uh, are you Thanos or something? Quincy, what are you doing? Didn't I tell you already? I'm saving the world. Uh, Cthulhu. Finally, some peace and quiet. All these lights. It's time for them to rest so others may keep shining. Beyond that gate, you'll find a new life for yourselves. One where your illness is cured, where everyone lives happily ever after. It will be a linear illusion with little resource required to maintain. But to you, it will feel like a lifetime as real as your own. Think of it as a parting gift. You hear that, Linry? We get to live the perfect timeline! L Linry? There's no point. I'm beyond grateful that our son is out there, but our purpose here is done. What truly happened beyond this world is already set. Why would another virtual ride matter when not when not even our own did? I've already seen all there is to see. All that truly matters anyway. But... But what if you haven't? I mean, I certainly had my world shattered too in more ways than one. But if anything, doesn't this broaden the possibilities, not narrow it? And for that matter, why does it even matter if our reality isn't base reality? They might not be THE reality, but they were still OUR realities, and all that we'd known. I mean, who's even to say that he here is truly the ultimate end of the stack? What's beyond that gate, it might not be real, relative to her at least, but it's just as real as relative to us and who knows maybe there'll be a glimpse of a reality that is truly out there somewhere a reality that we can visit and time 
to grow old together. What do you say, Linry? Wanna go on one last trip together? You'll wait for us until then? I won't need to wait. To me, time is a place. Go on. Your new life is waiting. Really? You're gonna start life from here? Well, good enough as any, I guess. Th th this literally begs the question. Does it really matter if it's real, as long as it's yours? You know what I mean? It's the ultimate philosophical question. Just like what was mentioned a while ago, does it really... You don't have to shine for the world to see. Isn't being the world to someone enough? You know? <laughs> like... Proving yourself to the world is one thing. But what's really important is proving yourself to yourself. And I guess... Even if your life doesn't really make sense right now. <laughs> oh look, it's those two. <laughs> they, they still end up together in the end. But yeah. At least it, it, it's fun to think about, right? That there is a version of you living your best life. And really, even if it's not your reality, does knowing about that best life really take away from the experience? It doesn't take away from its reality anyway. They're gonna rock. Yeah, they, they fell off the boat. There's the in-laws, I guess. Oh look, if, if we stop if we stop here, we actually end up dancing. Oh no. Oh you can dance with people. Oh. Oh look look at this guy. Yeah, 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 you shake that ass.
That's her, literally their granddaughter now. Well... We had a good run, huh? The bestest. It's about time. This is all I could manage to do. Hell. That was a lot, bro. Was it enough? More than I could ever ask for. But... I just wish he were actually here. He is here. He's been here this whole time. Oh shit. And from now on... He always will be. From now on, everyone will be. Oh, Neil, there you are. I just can't, can't hold it in anymore. I must confess to you. That's not funny. It's a little funny. 
So, did I handle that all right? Yeah, thanks. Strange how that's supposed to be the perfect timeline, though. It only felt perfect because it had the context of adversity that already exists here. Without that, there was nothing to overcome. It passed by without even a meaningful ripple. But still... Are you familiar with the Library of Babel? I can be. Should I download the encyclopedia on it? Uh, no, that's alright. It's this theoretical library of books containing every possible combination of letters and punctuation. Anything that can be written, or ever will be, can be found there. So it's mostly nonsense and noise, but once in a while, you reach for a book and it just happens to be exactly what you need. Oh, what is that? A perimeter breach attempt. I gotta go. Perimeter breach? What perimeter? Wait, y you don't mean... Ding dong. Bruh. Neil! I don't have your stapler, I swear. Oh, don't be silly, we were just nearby. Nearby now? Very far an hour ago before deciding to be nearby. Yeah, what were the chances, right? So anyway, we were gonna go somewhere rad, you in? How oh, rad. Surprisingly rad. Hard pass. <laughs> Gee, somebody was a party pooper. Alright, I guess no all you can eat ice cream for Neil then. I said I guess no all you can eat ice cream for Neil then He's coming out, isn't he? Eva We might as well Neil Or Rosaline. Who knows when we'll be the next time we'd be able to How did you change so fast? It's a coat, not a cocktail dress. I'm expecting greatness. Are, are you? Uh, you forgot to close the... Is somebody in there? Hello? Ooh. Dr. Neil, what have you been up to? You know, episode 10 ho I you know I need to I need to play a bird story. I haven't played a bird story. I've seen the mini episodes. Wait, if this is episode 10 Episode X. I guess it, it could be a 10 or an X. It never... They, they didn't really clarify, but... Huh. Interesting. Let's keep an eye out for those other ones. Okay. So, when I press escape the last time, it... Literally closed the game. That's it. That's the whole game. <laughs> so I have nothing more to add this uh, it was a great story a great game very thought-provoking and it made me excited for more like I, I like how it showed the the list of games in the series so far and how clearly uh, bird story is part of this, so I really I really need to get into that actually But as for this one, how do I feel about it? You know you'd think you'd think it'd stop crying after the third Third game in the series, you know <laughs> it, it, It's been I, I Know they're they hit differently the, they deal with different problems. They deal with different 
the, they're mixed differently. Each story is mixed differently, but I, I still feel like the writing is done in such a way that you, you just can't help yourself. If you have any kind of empathy, you're, you're gonna feel it in some way, shape, or form. Maybe not like me that literally just was fighting back tears while comment while reading the, the text uh, all the way through, but yeah. Anyway, uh, story-wise, well, at least we need at least we have the origins of Sigmund Corp. That's like a backstory, if you if you will. Uh, the backstory of Neil's mom too is pretty pretty good. But then again, I'm wondering why. Neil kept getting refused to join the organization his mom was in and he had to start his own. But then if he had to start his own, why does he feel like the butt of everyone? He, he's like, if Neil is actually the leader of Sigmund Corp, why is he always so... not leader -y, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Also, the, and I guess the last thing, that door closing at the end, that's implying something. Something was in Neil's apartment. Did he implant someone's memories in a robot? Is there someone else working with Neil? Who knows? You know, I guess that's what we, we need to look forward to in whatever next episode that comes out. Anyway, that's all for me. So, uh, I hope you enjoyed the out of character content but i really do want to play more rpgs on the channel so i mean indie games on the channel so let's just take this as a start shall we uh but yeah if you want to see more content like the depending on how well this series goes but like this or more like uh the general grpg rpg games Maybe leave a like and subscribe for more. This has been Caffeinified Gaming, and I'll see you guys in the next series.